you cannot ignore baseball right now, especially no, after last night. Shohei Otani making history. We had another no-hitter last night uh, here to tell us more. Nice enough to join us here. Uh, he's an author. He's uh, the publisher of The Dope. Uh, he's a longtime Sacramento a favorite. Used to write for the B. The one and only Mr. Baseball, Mark Kreidler. How's it going today, and Nobody Mr. calls Kreidler? me that. Yeah, and oh, nobody calls me that. I do. I never have. I <laughs> yeah. do. All right? Okay. I'll take full responsibility clear. now and ownership. Mr. Baseball. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah. How is everybody? Chris, how you doing, man? Good, good. Yeah, just good. been uh, trying to get through this baseball heavy time that we're in. <laughs> he but, doesn't uh, like besides, baseball. Besides that, it's uh, it's been great. It's been great. Yeah, I feel of, that. I do. One too many no hitters for me, but besides that, uh, besides that, we're doing great. <laughs> Excellent. Well, let's talk baseball. <laughs> let's do it. Let's do it. I'm thrilled. It's funny. Sweet. I remember. I remember talking with you about Otani before he came over the skepticism, you know, as to whether he could actually do both here. I remember your son, Ryan, working out at UCLA and and seeing him working out and saying, oh, the guy is huge. I remember you tell me that story. Do you think, Mark, that the Giants actually have a shot uh, this winter of bringing him in as a free agent? I do. I don't think that they necessarily have a great shot, but I, I think that, first of all, if you just kind of look up and down the coast, um, anything that's uh, sort of Pacific Rim accessible, which includes Seattle for that matter, is is going to be in play for Otani. I, I'm not sure that he necessarily wants to go far away from the West Coast. I think his preference would probably be to stay out this way. So yeah, the, the fact that he was on the Giants shortlist in 2017 when he ultimately chose the Angels uh, should tell you a little. And, and the fact that the Giants are at least as we sit here today, you know, they're a competitive team. Um, th as You know, this minute, they would be a playoff team. Not that that matters too much with almost 50 games to go. But, yeah, I think they're in the conversation. They will, they'll be able to have conversation with, Shotani, with Otani and with his people. And kind of that's the thing, Whitey, is, you know, it's a big mass of people around Otani. Um, the negotiations can get difficult really, really quickly. And so... You know, I mean, going into the to the whole long process, you bet. Yeah, they they have a place at the table. Hmm. So I think it's a, it's the Dodgers all the way. I hope I'm wrong. Hope I'm wrong. I think that's where he wants to go, and I think that's his end game. But we'll see. Well, we'll see. I mean, they, they they can do it if they want to. Yeah. You know, and the one thing about the Dodgers, they can spend over their budget because they don't really have a budget. So, you know, if if he really wants to minimize every single thing about this process, um, ex except which team he's playing for. You just sign with the Dodgers and stay, keep on living where you're living. So you mentioned the Pacific Rim being the the main, you know, crux of, of Otani's focus for for where he could potentially go. Is do you feel like it is truly just those teams that have a legitimate shot, or do you think there's teams outside, you know, the Yankees and, and teams that that might actually have a shot at him? You can never you always assume that the Yankees will be players. Um, and they'll throw some sort of offer together that's outlandish. Uh, yeah, I do. I think. I think if his preference is to remain on the on the West Coast or, or as close as possible, then I, I do think you know, come go, going into the whole free agent process, that teams on the West Coast are going to look the most appealing to him. But he's played in the American League for you know six years. He knows these markets. He knows that Boston's a great place to be a baseball player. He knows that New York is a great place to be a baseball player. So he, he isn't going to necessarily be opposed to joining a a team with a legendary history like that. Uh, I, that could appeal to him. Um, I just think he's. It's really clear if, if you go back and look at the guy's history. You know, he's in a lot of ways he's lived a really cloistered life. I mean, he was identified super young. He's really never done anything but baseball. When he was 13 years old, he basically left school and became and went to baseball school. So when you've kind of been in this insular world, you know, he keeps things pretty simple by choice. And that's kind of why I think he would choose West Coast. And to Whitey's point, you know, L.A. is probably Anaheim's biggest threat. Yeah, we're catching up with uh, Mark Kreider, Mr. Baseball. He's the author of several books, including uh, Surf's Up and uh, the baseball one. Um, yeah. And the ra and That's Wrestling also is one of my favorites. That's, but, yeah. yeah. That's Grappling in, in the revised edition. That's oh, okay. Grappling. Okay. Yeah. Do you have – this Thank is – yeah, this may be a dumb question. I apologize. Do you have any idea 
what the winning bidder is going to end up paying Otani? I mean, how high do you think this reasonably could actually go for his services? Well, he's, he's not 25, you know, I mean, he'll be coming up on his age 30 year. So let's presume five to seven more years of, you know, insanely high value. Um, and even that, you know, with, with the, you can see that the angels are protecting him on the mound in a sort of really, really concentrated effort to, you know, and retain that effectiveness on the mound for as long as possible. Anybody who's pitching every six days is being yeah. held very carefully. Right. Um, but, you know, so let's assume five to seven years of peak production, which means he's probably going to get a 10 year deal. If that's the case, if I'm right, and it's a 10 year deal to land him, it could be beyond it, but let's just say 10 years. He's going to get 45 to $50 million a year. Mm. I mean, so you're probably looking at a half a billion dollar contract. Oof. And that's, that's, that's why when, when we say, like, pick any team, you know, are they in the hunt? Well, yeah, until you start counting dollars. Yeah. <laughs> and it, as soon as you start counting dollars, somebody's going to say, uh, we withdraw from the process, but thank you. We've enjoyed your time. So, you know, a team's going to have to get really creative or, do the the thing that baseball's starting to do more often, which I believe their own rules makers are going to change at some point in the future, which is pay somebody on a 15 year contract or pay somebody on a 17 year contract where long after they're really done playing, they're paying them Mm -hmm. that I think MLB is going to probably move to, to, to strike. (laughs) Mm -hmm. But, but in the meantime, it's still a, it's plausible that a team could offer that. Shifting gears a little bit, I was talking, I, I asked Whitey this earlier today, and I'm curious to get your thoughts. Uh, it feels like a lot of the talk locally specifically is is about how, you know, the Dodgers seem to be the the team to beat and the team that everybody has their eye on. They're kind of the big bad, if you will, uh, that everybody looks to at, in the NL. But if you look at the standings, it's actually the Braves who have been leading the NL and, and have clearly, you know, record-wise been the best team in the NL. Do you feel like the, the Braves have kind of been overlooked and, and they're really the team to beat, or is it the Dodgers? No, well, the Braves are assassins. Yeah. I mean, they do get overlooked, but, I mean, they're they're unbelievable. And they this isn't new. They just play in a market that people don't pay particularly close attention to. And, and you know, they had a – a star star in Freddie Freeman. So of course he's in LA now. And the guy who replaced him, Matt Olson, former a Mm -hmm. is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. The guy's absolutely, but he's not getting, he just doesn't get noticed in the same way. So I don't really think it's a, a baseball reflection, Chris. I just think it's a market reflection. Mm -hmm. People who are really watching the game would tell you that going into the playoffs, the Braves should probably win. Mm -hmm. If they have any, any sort of reasonable health on the mound, guys like Max Reed, who's just now come back from an injury, for example, they're just, they're extremely tough. They did exactly what they were supposed to do at the deadline to sort of quietly improved in a couple of areas. Like they're, they match up with the Dodgers in almost every way. The one thing that the Braves don't necessarily do that the Dodgers do erratically, but, but that they could do is just suddenly go nuts offensively, mm. which they've been doing lately. And that's the one, you know, with with every postseason scenario, you're always asking the same question, which is how many games? Because it really depends on how often you get to use your best pitchers. And that's the, that's the health question. Um, he, in every way that I can think of, the Braves match up with the Dodgers. He doesn't call himself that, but I call him Mr. Baseball. Mm-hmm. One only Mark Kreiler. Yeah. Make sure you check out. You miss his writing in the B. Check out the dope, his blog, uh, Tremendous Sports Writing. Thank you, Kreitz. Appreciate it very much. Talk to you again soon. You bet. You look forward to it. See yep. you guys. All yes, right. Sir. Mark Kregler. Mr. Fantastic. Baseball. Yeah. You know, Buster Olney? Yes. Buster absolutely. Olney yeah. one time said he should be called, I kid you not, Captain Baseball. Really? Yes. Are you really the only one who calls him Mr. Baseball? Or is that- I kind of started as a joke, but now it's like, uh-huh. to me, it's, it's like, that's on. who he is. Yeah, so. exactly. Yeah. I mean, that's, <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I'm, you know, I, I've listened to you guys in the past and I've always that's heard what I call referred him. to as Mr. Baseball. It's yeah. One of those things that you just kind of spoke into existence. Coming up, the Fact Fantasy Showdown hasn't necessarily been my favorite feature of late okay. on the show. It's I, all right. 